Ah, there you all are. Sorry about that. Right, we'll know not to do that again, guys. That was interesting. Somebody called me up on the messenger and it cut off the broadcast. So we'll be avoiding that. Just be with you in two seconds. We'll be avoiding that in the future, eh? Ooh, we live and learn. Anyway, I've uh, taken out the app, so shouldn't be a problem. Thank you very much for being with us. A uh, little technical trouble, and um, it's like the early days of uh, of television, isn't it, when all this happens? And uh, No sound. Well, I've no doubt sound will come back, Ron. It might just be yours. Uh, has everybody else got sound? Hi, Scotty, says Julianne Scott. Dinky do. Cheers, Scotty, says James Lafferty. Dinky do. Welcome back, sir, says Robert Devlin. And uh, Jamie Michael Wells. Yay! You're back. We are back, guys. Yes, I do most sincerely apologize for our interruption to transmission there. Um, but I can see what happened. Somebody tried to ring in on the messenger. And uh, anyway, what I've done is I've taken that app out of the phone so we don't get that particular problem again. I was actually thinking we could maybe have put them on live, but it interrupted the broadcast. Yay, you're back. Excellent. Get sound and vision. Oh, I got sound and vision, says Angie. Good. Uh, got sound, says Louise. Excellent, Louise Gemmel. Adrienne Murphy. Hey, Scotty. And we June says hi. So, where did we get to? Yes, we were talking about should you have children out of wedlock? Now, don't panic. As I say, if you're not married, there's still plenty of time. Uh, extended time. Come on, do you agree, says Steph? Uh, well, how long were we out for, Steph, would you have said? I'd calculated it at about four minutes. Was that right? Change the valves in the computer. Love the hat, Scott is, says Wedge. So there you are. Yes, this is my very finest bonnet for you. Sorry I'm late, Scotty. I don't mind detention, says John Rogers. No, you're here now, and that's what matters, John. A very, very warm welcome to all of you. If you've just joined us, you're watching Scotty McClue, the world's top broadcaster, live on Facebook Live, just for you, saying dinky do. So there you are. Would you do wedding services, says Robert Devlin? Do you know I might, Robert? I actually, I may become... A, what they call a civil celebrant is that right and i could actually take the wedding uh, you should be on lbc says wedge absolutely should be on every single platform that's going wedge very 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 important and um, i think what the bbc needs to do is a national radio phone in with scotty mcclue and uh, get everybody involved there i'm in touch with a lot of people in new york city some very 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 big names over there who are very interested in putting Scotty McClure on and picking up the network. So that's rather good. If you can afford kids, you can afford to get married, says Steve Burrows. Absolutely, absolutely. I thought something was missing, says Wedge. Um, so there you go. Excellent stuff. Uh, girls used to get locked up in mental hospitals if they had a child out of wedlock. Well, I'm not actually advocating we go back to that, George, the days of bedlam. I think that was actually rather wicked. And also the church used to take the children off the girls. So there we are, and put them into the children's homes. Uh, Robert Devlin says, Albert Pity, Dinky Do. So there you are, Dinky Do, absolutely. Uh, so, no, I'm not advocating we go back to that, but I think it would make for a more stable family life if people got married first and then had the children. Uh, why not go on the bar network for Scotland like Clyde One, Fourth One, T, F, M, etc.? Well, I don't run the bar network for Central Scotland, so I wouldn't know if they would um, put Scotty McClue on the network. Um, before Bower bought that business, I used to be regularly networked by the previous company. So there we go. A petition for Scotty and LBC or the SBC, the Scottish Broadcasting Centre or Broadcasting Corporation. Good morning, Scotty, from Australia, says Erica. Dinky do, Erica. Lovely to have you from Australia. If you're watching in India, Africa, Canada, America, Madagascar, Tasmania, the Arctic, the Antarctic, Russia, China, Japan, the um, South Pole, the North Pole, the Tierra del Fuego. What a place that is, Scotty. Um, then do let me know. Angie Tom says, I was engaged when I had my son. The relationship went really bad. A.K.A. He, he, he did nout a way out with his pals all the time. Well, you don't want that, Angie, do you? So there you are. But the, the ladies need to do their bit to keep their man as well. You, 
You know what I mean, girls? <laughs> Absolutely. Uh, what's a sensible amount of kids to have, says Robert? I would think two. Two, Robert. So there you are. Or if you're a Roman soldier, then that would be five, wouldn't it? Uh, so there we are. Evening, Scotty. This is John Toms. Very fine Scottish businessman there. Uh, Dinky-doo, John Toms. Love your ideas. <clears throat> you are the voice of Scotland for radio, like the voice of radio in 2011-2012. Uh, Graham O'Neill says, hi, Scotty. This is Billy Matheson. Dinky-doo, Graham O'Neill. Thank you very much for saying hi. Hi from Scotty McClure and everybody throughout the globe. Remember, guys, this is two-way traffic. So the fact I'm up in front of you on Facebook means that the whole world has actually got access to this program. So there you go. How big is that? Scotty, marriage is a very beautiful and wonderful thing. I've been happily married for 12 years, says Tony. Excellent stuff. Has your positive views of Scottish independence damaged your chances of working for big radio stations? No, I shouldn't think so, James. I don't think they would be that narrow-minded. Uh, the only thing is, obviously, most of Scottish media is based out with Scotland and uh, is relying on Scotland being part of the UK. So they would have to rethink their business. Um, and that would be fine because we do need Scottish media. That's why I'm trying to raise funding. Okay, struggling a little bit at the start, but it will blossom. Uh, we've, you can be a patron of Scotty McClure at Patreon or patreon.com forward slash Scotty McClure, all one word. You can go to gofundme.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClure and stick a fiver in there. That would be tremendous. You can go to paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClure, all one word, and stick anything you like in there. Here's a wee Highland Lament. That would be nice, says George Raffin. A wee Highland Lament. Uh, wait, 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 I'll do, I'll do you one. Um, I'll just do you a vocal. There's a wee Highland Lament for you. A shout out says Shani Brown. Absolutely shout out for you, Shani. Thank you, Scotty. You're spot on, my friend, says James Lafferty. So there you are. I don't mind. I mean, the, the you know, the fact that Scotland gets its freedom is far more important than any one person or anybody's career or anything like that. Um, that's the way the pipes were learnt, says James Lafferty. You're quite right. Scotty is the X Factor, says Robert. Good for you, Robert. Vocally, says James. What have you been smoking, Scotty, says Ross Peebles. <laughs> Nothing, Ross. Absolutely, I don't smoke, dear boy. Fantastic. I'm getting it new. I'm greeting new. I'm greeting new, says George. It's a very, very sad number, that. Do you know what it was called, George? Are you able to tell me? So there you are. Do you let me know? And uh, can we share the video, folks? We're just coming up to our first share point. Share, 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 share. Very, very important. We're one big family, says Ron Stewart. Uh, yes, we are, Ron. We are very much one big family. Facebook Live, the Scotty McClue Show on a Sunday night at 10 o'clock sharp for one hour of superb scintillating information, education, and entertainment. Nothing else like it on the internet. By the way, I need a favor. I need about three people to click subscribe on my YouTube channel. So Scotty McClue YouTube channel, and you'll see a red button. Doesn't cost you a bean, just click subscribe. And I need three of you to do that. And that should be us with our thousand subscribers, meaning we can also use it as a broadcast platform. It manages hard work. You can't always get your own way all the time, but it's better than being on your own, says Tony. My grandparents had 13 children and were married for over 50 years my teachers so there you are they taught them radio needs local voices not all this network There's so much network shows what will ruin radio i think what are your thoughts on this yes i mean as you know i have spent my life campaigning for local radio now we had a 50th anniversary uh, this week the 50th anniversary of the marine offenses act when a labor government it was dear old tony ben Right, my old friend Tony Benn, I'm surprised and shocked, decided that they would um, 
make it illegal for the pirate radio stations. Now, I think that was an own goal by a Labour government. And what I would like to see is a Labour government, the next one that comes in, repeal the Marine Offences Act so you can start any radio station you like anywhere in territorial waters. It doesn't matter. So a deregulation there. And of course, that brought in BBC's Radio 1. And I can remember speaking at a radio conference and in came the head of Radio 1. And I thought, my goodness, what's he doing here? And of course, it's because Scotty McClue has a massive, massive youth following. Interesting, isn't it? So Scotty McClue should actually be on BBC Radio 1. Uh, not bad, Ron Stewart, just pressing the main school trousers while watching, says Angie. Go to YouTube, says John Toms. Absolutely, everybody go to YouTube. And I'm looking for three of you, three of you, to subscribe. Search for Scotty McClue, says John. Absolutely, John. And then subscribe. Click subscribe. Uh, some people on benefits only have kids for the money. We should stop paying them after two. Yes, but we couldn't do it retrospectively. I mean, if you've got more than two kids, we do need to look after the wee ones. I don't want youngsters in this country going without. I don't want youngsters starving. We've got all these food banks. This um, whole carry-on of austerity is purely a political wheeze. Uh, by a very unpleasant political party. There was no need for it at all. Plenty of money sloshing about. And Mrs May has not uh, um, actually been absolutely upfront when she said there's no money tree. So there you go. There might not be an actual money tree, but there's plenty of money sloshing about there. Uh, I suggested a pirate ship radio for real news the other day, says Louise Gemmell. Very good. Uh, click here to subscribe. John's put up the URL for you. So you'll see John Toms there in front of you. And you can click subscribe on YouTube uh, and get on there. I'm going to start a campaign on Facebook. Bring back L107, says Stephen Wright. Steve Wright. Absolutely. Stephen Wright in the afternoon. Could you please give a mention to um, PJ2017, uh, which is a tribute night to Peril Jam while raising money for Diabetes UK. PJ Con, C-O-N, 2017, a tribute night for Peril Jam raising money for diabetes, says Colin Roger. Yes, right you are, Colin. Um, so there we go. Clip subscribe, everybody. It's free and it's excellent. Yes, there's about 310 uh, pieces of video and audio on Scotty McClure's YouTube. So uh, you'll get that uh, going back over the years. Very, very, very important. Excellent. Now, social media, of course, Scotty McClue single-handedly. I have always been ahead of my time. Who brought you the big phone-ins in Scotland for the first time? Who brought the very big phone-ins in the northwest of England? Over in the Midlands, right? So there you go. And now, of course, every station's uh, doing it, jumping on the bandwagon. But they're not Scotty McClue. So their shows don't do as well as Scotty McClue's shows do. So there we are. Uh, who was your favorite? What was your favorite broadcast ever done? Um, I loved being on uh, national television with Barbara Dixon and uh, interviewed by Nicky Campbell. That was fantastic. But I think after one of the uh, Catholic bishops had gone astray, and uh, we suggested that the Catholic Church should practice what it preaches and give him his job back, that caused a bit of a stushy. But nevertheless. It was a massive, massive broadcast. All the national newspapers were listening in their offices and then trying to get um, column inches off Scotty McClure afterwards. You also played the accordion on a chat show first, says John Toms. I did. Yes, absolutely. You see, you'll see me trying to have a go at that. And if you want to hear Scotty McClure's own composition, The Mermaid, you'll get that on YouTube. So I composed a song about a fisherman who caught a mermaid in his net and fell in love with her and took her home and the two of them were very, very happy. But he realised that she had to go back to her own people. She had to go back to sea. And he took her back to sea and then had to wave farewell. Uh, so there we are as he stood on the land. So farewell to the land of the mermaid. My own composition played on the accordion by myself. Scotty McClure. 
Vincent Van Gogher, whatever happened to the Mexican? We love the Mexican. Absolutely agree about local radio. Stop the networking. Bring local radio with local voices. Apart from yourself, my other local radio hero was Tiger Tim Stevens on Radio Clyde. I know Tiger Tim very well. A wonderful, wonderful man. And... Um, has uh, been very tough. He hasn't been well for a while, and he's fought that and dealt with it in his own way. Tremendous guy. If you're watching or listening, Tiger Tim, we send love to you. Uh, YouTube's free across the world. Subscription to Scotty McClure's free. Join here. Thank you, John Toms. So very, very much appreciated. You need quite a big tank for a mermaid to live in, says Alex Duff. Absolutely, but go and hear it, and you'll hear the sound of the mermaid going back to our own people. <coughs> have you ever read the Book of the Scots? Ronald MacDonald Douglas. James Lafferty, yes. Have you heard Scotty McClue's book? I've written a book, chapter one is up on YouTube. Scotty McClue, Deliver Us From Evil. You'll get it up there. Great Yorkshire Radio, excellent. Great short, yeah. now guys, this is so important. Great Yorkshire Radio is a massive, massive station. It's a digital station, it's an internet station, it's an app station and um it's fantastic it's um got terrific management it's got some very very big names on it as well so get yourself listening to great yorkshire radio.co.uk a tremendous station did the fisherman and the mermaid get married and have kids lol steve steve burrows oh lol steve very good uh bruce forsyth gone scotty your thoughts of george i was a massive fan of bruce forsyth's work I didn't know him personally. I didn't actually meet him. But I was a massive, massive fan of his work. Uh, you know, he stayed down south. He stayed in uh, in Surrey. Uh, so there you are, uh, as far as I remember. Uh, happy birthday, Linda. Uh, Louise Gemmel says, yes, absolutely. Uh, who would you like to do a live broadcast with now, past or present? Why, Sir Robert? I loved um, Terry Wogan. I loved Sir Terry. Um, I'd like to have, uh, you know, had a chat with him. Uh, wonderful, wonderful broadcaster. Another guy, a tremendous journalist called James Cameron. Alan Wicker. Does anybody remember Wicker's World? So there are. Does anybody remember Cliff Mitchellmore? Does anybody remember Robert, um, Robin Hall and Jimmy McGregor on the Tonight program? Does anybody remember Millicent Martin singing "And That Was the Week That Was"? David Frost. And uh, a few years ago, Ned Sharon, who produced that, was the week that was. Um, he and I were on Radio 4 on a programme called Loose Ends. Lovely, lovely guy. Sadly, no longer with us. Um, he got a good innings, Scotty, 89 years. Yes, 89's not bad. Uh, I'd quite like 91. So there you are. Me, haha, -ha, says John Toms. John Toms, very fine broadcaster. And it would be good to do a programme with him. Um, we've had some trouble watching a wise talk today. Uh, had some trouble watching a wise talk. Now, what are you talking about, Erica? This is Erica Meyer, who's in Australia right now. Uh, don't mind anybody you mentioned, says Robert. Right, okay. Love it, says Peter Ewing. Fantastic. Uh, can we tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 that Scotty McClure is live on Facebook Live just for you, Dinky Doo? We're getting a good audience well up into the thousands there i uh, love terry's commentary on eurovision he made it worth watching his comments says lee firm yeah absolutely right lee he was tremendous he made the eurovision song contest what it was terry wogan tremendous guys there you are uh, god bless him i say requiem scat and patchy terry wogan sir terry terence marvelous man need to dash night night matey happy birthday to linda Happy birthday, Linda. Dinky do from the whole world. Watching right now. Dinky do to Linda and uh, to John Toms. Dinky do. Take care of yourself. And uh, thanks for arranging all that. How's the wee furry friend at McClue Towers doing, says Robert? Robert, I haven't seen him or her for a day or two, so I must keep an eye out. And of course, just managed to reach for the camera. Lovely wee character. Always looking forward to Monday mornings to watch you. And today I'm having trouble watching. Ah, Erica Wright. I wonder what that's all about. She smiled. Good night. Need to sleep. Zzz. Go on, get to your bed, Toms, for goodness sake. James Lafferty and 13 others have just shared. Share, 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 share. Scotty McClure is live 
on Facebook Live, one of the world's great broadcast platforms. Get yourselves onto YouTube as well. We upload the programs to YouTube. You can catch them there on Scotty McClure's YouTube channel. A great man was Dr. John Grierson of this wonderful world. A good Scot. Now, John Grierson, am I not right in thinking? Hang on. Am I not right in thinking that John Grierson used to do these tremendous documentaries? I think he did. The John Grierson documentaries. I am pretty sure that he did Nightmail. Is that right? So there were black and white documentaries. A lot of celebs gone in the last couple of years, says George. Yes, George. A lot of them have gone, but we move on. They've gone to the next room. So there we are. And we move on. And it's interesting, when I'm watching a 30s black and white movie, and I think to myself, do you know, every single one of these people has actually gone. So uh, very, very, very strange feeling. And also, have you ever watched when you see old films of the mines or the mills, and you think every single one of these people will have moved on by now. Have you ever seen Robin Williams and the Dead Poets Society? Tremendous film. Remember we watched it when I was a student. Um, Giuseppe Buschetti, fantastic. How are you? See, si, see, si, Giuseppe. Lovely to have you with us. Jerry Lewis went today. I know Vincent. Yes, Jerry Lewis has gone. He was 91, is that right? I mean, they can't be around forever. Um, Michael Potley says, hi, dinky do, Michael. He was known as the father of the documentary, says Alfred James Wright. You're right, the John Grierson documentary. Did he do Night Mail? And did we see the flying Scotsman in one of his documentaries, Alfred James Wright? Come on now, fess up, tell all, Alfred James. There you are. If you've just joined us, folks, a very, very warm welcome. If you're wondering what on earth's happening, Scotty McClue, that's me, the world's top broadcaster, is here for you, saying Dinky Doo live on Facebook Live. One of the world's great broadcast, broadcast, broadcast platforms. There we are, Chains for Teeth. Robin Williams, Captain. Now, there was another great entertainer, Robin Williams. So sorry that he has gone. Funny, funny, funny man. Clever, 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 clever man. Uh, so there you are. Yes, um, Doris Day and her female co-star for Cal Calamity Jane are still alive. And the only two living are from the movie. So James, Calamity Jane, Calam. We liked that. That was a great movie. Is Calamity Jane, now, have I got this right? Was Calamity Jane take me back to the Black Hills of Dakota? Yes, or was that Annie, get your gun? I'm just trying to remember. So there we go. Tell me about that one, folks. Come on, all you movie buffs. Get yourselves on here and tell McClure. Am I right or am I not right? Which one was it from? I'm sure it was from one of them. It was either from Calamity Jane, Calam, or um, or from uh, Annie Get Your Gun. Jim Dale from the Carry On films, still alive. And, yes, absolutely. Super guy. Wonderful, wonderful actor. It was from Calamity Jane. Take me back. That's, that's the one. Okay. Um, I have to, cannot listen, having trouble, so I'll say goodnight to Scotty. I hope I have better luck next time to listen to a very wise man. Thank you, Erica Mayer. Erica Mayer in uh, Australia. She's down under at the moment, and uh, it's breakfast, breakfast time there in Australia. Scotty, always grateful to you for inspiring me into radio and studying media. I've always loved listening to you. Love you always, says Tony. Tony, you're a great man. Keep up your radio. Never, ever, 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 ever give up. So there you are. And don't have people telling you they think you're too young for something. They think you're too old. I used to go for jobs. And say, no, you, you don't have the experience, Scotty. And that's for a much older person. For somebody that really knows what they're doing. And then when I started to know what I was doing, I applied for those. No, oh, Scotty, that's, that's for a younger person, I think, actually. You know, that's a... For somebody uh, young, every day. Um, yes, Howard Keel singing with her. Absolutely, Howard Keel. There was a great voice as well. Yes, it was Take Me Back to the Black Hills, says Donnie Richardson. Thank you, Donnie. Dinky do from East Scott of a Clue. I just started a campaign, bring back L107. Now, well, this time we'll do it properly, and we shan't have uh, anybody there that can um, make a mess of the stewardship. So there we are. Take me back to the Campsie Hills, says George Raffin. 
Dinky do, George. Yes, the Campsy Hills. You can't beat that. What was your first job, Scotty? Is the James Lafferty. My first job was the cabin boy on the Gurk to Helensborough ferry. I swept up the fag ends. I took the fares, half a crown or five shillings. I um, shinned up the ladder at the piers with a rope. I uh, pulled the gangway up. I greeted the passengers. And I shouted whichever side I was on, Helensborough or Gurk. So there you go. That was my first job. So there you are. And I can remember uh, during the seamen strike in 1969, um, I was on board a little boat called the Gurukian. And we went down to Rothsey to get Johnny Beatty and the Alexander brothers from their summer show. So there we are. They had to, had to be got back somehow from Rothsey. So we went all the way down to Rothsey and came back in the Gorokian. Name me 10 Western Islands, Scotty boy, says James Duffy. Right. Lewis, Harris, Rum, Egg, Muck, Isla, Jura, Mull, Iona, Scarborough. 10. Done. Do you like that? There you go. Craig and Doran, says Giuseppe. Well, we didn't go into Craig and Doran. That was actually the railway pier that was known as. So originally that would be for the London Northeastern Railway boats, of which the Waverley was at one time before she was bought by the Caledonian Steam Packet. So the London Northeastern Railway. And the Waverley is still in LNER colours, if you look at her funnel. So there we are, marvellous. Nobody ever mentions Mingley. Yes, Mingley. What about Pabby? Do they mention Pabby? So there we are. Dinky do, says James. Jura. Yes, I said Jura. Didn't I? Jura. Uh, Isla Jura and uh, Scarba. Uh, did you get seasick? No. Never ever seasick except once on the uh, big ferry, the big cat, going from Liverpool to Dunleary. <coughs> and I felt, oof, it was June. And I thought they had to actually shut the duty free shop because it was so wild out in the Irish Sea. Uh, but some of the, when you think the wonderful thing, those of you that are watching uh, may remember the big ships from the Isle of Man Steam Packet Company in the 1930s, the Lady of Man, the Manx Man. So these wonderful things, the Mona's Isle, fantastic. And these boats were tremendous. They used to go right out the, into the Irish Sea in terrific storms. And they very rarely had to come back or anything like that they were brilliant the captains were so brave the manx man the only thing i found about the manx man if you were up to the wheelhouse the helmsman had to straddle a, a brass shaft going from the steering engine to the wheel did you know that does anybody know that am i right or am i right uh, scotty you're a wealth of knowledge i love it I was at Millpit on Saturday. It was fantastic, Captain. Did you see the Crocodile Rock? Everybody's dancing to the Crocodile Rock. I still know how to run the desk, Captain. That never goes away. Once we know how to run the desk, everything in the studios. Of course, fantastic. No bother, Stephen. The Clyde Puffers you worked on. No, but I used to go on board the Clyde Puffers. I used to go on board the Cloys. I used to go on board the Spartan. And um, West Highlanders add an extra phrase to a word. So the Spartan was the Spartan, the Spartan, and they, they don't work for the Admiralty, they work for the Admiralty. Uh, so there you are. Scotty, I don't think big radio networkers get what local radio is about connecting to the listener. Do you agree? I agree wholeheartedly. This is why I'm doing what I'm doing. I mean, I don't get paid for what I do here at all. This is a labour of love. That's why I'm asking some of you, would you mind sticking a couple of quid or a fiver into the GoFundMe occasionally or into paypal.me forward slash Scotty McClue? Uh, because what I'm trying to do is build up an international show with local aspects to it. So my knowledge should extend to most localities throughout the world and we can start to identify and talk about where people are so it's like massive local radio but also i think local television they should uh, put this program on at night for half an hour on the telly so say i don't know 11 till half past half 11 till midnight scotty mcclue live on the telly then you wouldn't have all this political problems that you have because we'd already have discussed it 
So there you are. Then the BBC wouldn't be worried about how they should program the stations because we'd already have discussed it. Uh, two more subscriptions to get Scotty to 100. Click the link and subscribe. It only takes a click. I'm at 998, guys, on my YouTube channel. Scotty McClure YouTube channel. Two of you. Go on and just click subscription. It won't cost you a bean. Uh, there's a large private yacht sitting at Greenock. It must be worth 20 to 30 million. There's George Mullen. Fantastic. Let's sack the BBC, says Dave Gardner. And I don't know if you read Leslie Riddock's wonderful piece in, uh, I think it was in the National Newspaper. And uh, I don't think it went down too well at uh, Broadcasting House in Scotland. But nevertheless... A wonderful, wonderful, talented, able, clever journalist, Leslie Riddock. Somebody that if I was running the BBC in Scotland, I would woo, or to attempt to woo, do you like the word woo, back into the BBC for her input. That's what we're needing to do. The BBC has always struck me. Um, it used to be an opt-out of the home service. And then it's kind of stuck there for years and years and years and years and years. And I think we need to move it on now. And I think we need live broadcasting, interactive. Ask the people. Go to the people. Why is it official bodies, politicians and that, are scared stiff of the people? The people are you and I. They were, we're not that frightening. Sorry, Scott, I lost my Wi-Fi connection. I'm back with you now. Leslie is fantastic. She's a wonderful lady, yes. I've worked with her. Um, anything worth 20 million in Greek <laughs> won't be there in the morning, says Vincent Van Gogh. 999 now. I just subscribed, says Deej Maximus. DJ Maximus. Fantastic. 999. Thank you. One more then. And that's us there. Can you not get on that channel after Peter and Ruffy? Yes, I think that would be excellent. So you have Peter and Ruffy's show. And what's that on? That's on STV. Is that right? STV. STV2. And uh, you could have Scotty McClue on there. And we could do you half an hour of chit-chat. We didn't get the phones back. See, I think we need to get the phones back. I'm thinking of a big broadcast company. Listen to me. That also has access to telephones. Now, there's one or two, right? That do telephones. They do internet and they do telephones, and they also broadcast. So I don't know if anybody knows anybody of influence in these companies, right? Mum's the word, but uh, say to them, we'll get you Scotty McClure. He does live, unscripted, in-vision broadcasting. All right? By his own admission, he's, he's, he's not an old painting, but that doesn't matter. Phones are great. Communication is the key to life, says David Gardner. Absolutely, David. James Lafferty has mentioned one company. Do they do phones as well, James? Excellent stuff. Well, that's what we're needing. A massive internet company now to take this program up and say, OK, Scotty, we'll get you out to all our customers and we'll offer you as a service and you can have Scotty McClure and the phone calls would be free. Do you see the attraction of that? The viewing figures would be massive. Absolutely through the roof because... We're watching ourselves, guys. Do you get it? Um, there we are. You are an oil painting, says Robert. Thank you, Robert. What a lovely, lovely thing to say. Uh, so there we go. I think that's it, says DJ Maximus. 1,000 subscribers. Done. Fantastic. Thank you, everybody. That is very, very much appreciated. I am overwhelmed by the support for what I'm doing. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. You know I'll always try and get in touch with you. Last month. We had difficulty with signals and what have you. But nevertheless, we all got in touch. Um, that's you got the thousands, Scotty, says John O'Rourke. Thank you, John. That is brilliant. Very, very much appreciated. Give us some hearts and some thumbs up, guys. Come on. Hearts and thumbs up. On my Periscope platform, I notice I've got nearly 70,000 hearts. I should have millions. Millions, millions, millions. So can everybody start spreading this program around social media click the link send it round as much as you can uh, now who else have we got i wonder how the bbc would do if there was subscription based well james i've got tremendous time for a lot of what the bbc does they do some excellent programming last night they had an alan bennett season and we had the lady in the van 
we had um, the History Boys. We had um, Alan Bennett talking about his work and his writing and clips of some of the monologues that Thora Heard was in. You know, tremendous stuff. All power to you, Scotty. Congratulations on your 1,000 subscribers on YouTube, says Ben Lucas. Thank you do, Ben. Thank you very much for that. That is absolutely tremendous. So there's many, many great things that the BBC has done, so particularly since it was set up, by Reith, but it was to license the airwaves because the government, after the First World War, realized that there was something very, very powerful out there. Now, a lot of these airwaves are going to end up unused because we're going digital, all right, or we've gone digital in so many areas. Uh, another broadcast platform for Scotty. We're always growing an audience, says Ben Lucas. Yes, we are, Ben. Whatever we've got here, you can 10 times that throughout the rest of the social network. Very, very, very important. Um, so there we are. So very much appreciated. Thank you for that. But yes, if one of the big internet providers takes this up, we can get on the phones and we can say all sorts of things and do all sorts of things. And it would be massive. The only thing is, it would mean a complete rethink for terrestrial broadcasters if they hadn't picked it up. And when Dad's Army was on, there was a saying that even the BBC were beginning to realise that they had a hit on their hands. Now, it's interesting because there was a gentleman went round ITV stations and um, he said, I've got, uh, here's what I do. I do little puppets and we blow them up and all sorts of things. And they went, nah, 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 nah. Wouldn't be interested in that. Wouldn't be interested. Then he went to, I think it was Lou Grade. And Lou Grade, of course, a wonderful, wonderful showman. Big cigar. I take as much of this as you can give me. He said to the guy, and that was Jerry Anderson with Fireball XL5, Thunderbirds, Captain Scarlet and the Mr. Runs, Stingray. Uh, you know, I mean, how many of these things were you and I brought up with? How good is that? So there you are. And then uh, again, a guy went in and he said, I do puppets, I do glove puppets. Companies all said, nah, nah, not interested in that. Went to Lou Grade. There we go, the Muppets. I take as much of this as you can give me. Tremendous. Are uh, you doing any pop-ups during the weeks of Steve? Yes, I do. Do you remember another Scottish documentary maker who worked on the Tonight TV programme? Fife Robertson. Robbie? Robbie? Yes, Fife Robertson. Good evening to you, Fife Robertson. And of course, uh, a lot of what was happening was um, Fife Robertson used to get uh, taken off. When I say taken off, he got impersonated. Uh, fantastic stuff. Not taken off the telly. He got impersonated. People used to take him off as they say and um, I'm wondering if now was there one on the on the Stanley Baxter show there was another wonderful wonderful performer there is a wonderful performer Stanley Baxter uh, fantastic stuff uh, yes I remember Robbie I remember Fife Robertson you're doing pop-ups in the week so Steve well I did a couple of pop-ups this week Steve very very important because I wanted to send condolences to everybody involved and affected by the tragedy in Barcelona by the outcry there and the outrage that happened in Barcelona. So there we are. Hello McClue. Show 44 has been stunning, says Gordon Sterling. Thank you. Gordon Sterling, I don't want you to be feel ashamed or anything, but you are stunning. A wonderful man. Very talented piper, is that right? A great piper. But you've driven a bus with a Gardner 6XLB engine. LXB or XLB? Have I said it right? And was I right in my comment? It was an old driver that came on to uh, Top 107 one night and said, um, Scotty, the Gairdner did 25 mile an hour down the hill and 25 mile an hour up the hill. And that was the thing about it. These engines were never labouring. They were never under load. And I've got a friend who actually repairs Gardner diesels. And uh, he said he'd done the springs on this. And I said, you know, how long will these springs last? And he said, I can't remember what he said, 50 or 100 million hours, you know, before they would need to be replaced in these wonderful engines. And then he started one up, got a battery and a wee cup of diesel and 
Boom, num, 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 Away she went, tremendous. I can tell it's a gardener. Show 44 has been stunning. Did you ever know the Leyland Arab? Did you know that one, Gordon? And tell me if you're a piper or a drummer. I think you're a pipe man, aren't you? What solution does one have for counter-terrorism in the UK and how to eradicate it from this land, says James Duffy. A wonderful, wonderful thought, James. You put Scotty McClue on the radio and television. And we talk to every single person, from people who are feeling well, to people who are feeling off colour, to people who are feeling angry, to people who've had their brains mucked about with, all that sort of stuff. And we get on and we discuss it and we put a stop to all this. So there you are. And uh, that's what I say. The Gardener 6 LXB bombproof would run without oil and water. I'm a piper, an ex-drummer on the dark side before I saw the light. Absolutely started the two fours. I think my two favourites at the moment, I mean, my father was a great piper with the Cameron Highlanders. But I think my two favourites, Gordon, would probably be the 2-4 Pipe March Far O'er Stray. Right? Do you know that one? And then, of course, Glen Calla Castle uh, by the Argyles uh, Piper. So there you go. Fantastic stuff. Uh, does anyone remember Pipe Major Ronnie McCallum in Inverarian? Inverarian District Pipe Band. I've just won the Pipe Band Championships. The World Pipe Band Championships could not be better deserved. A wonderful one. I was doing my chieftain of the Bears Den and Milgai Highland Games where the Inverary Pipe Band came up for their trophy. Diesel engines. Bad word these days, says George. No, 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 no. They're taught to be a bad word. The Gardener is not a diesel engine as such. The Gardener is a heavy oil engine, George. So I've never heard a bad word against heavy oil. There we are. That's the Gardener for you. And Lawrence Gardener. I used to stay around the corner from Patrick Croft where they made the engines, right? Patrick Croft uh, in Manchester, just at Monton, the outskirts of Manchester, just along in Salford. Uh, so there you are. Patrick Croft. And uh, that was the Gardner factory. I remember popping in there. Uh, gardeners had gone, of course, when I went in. But um, what you had there was um, the heavy oil engine. And Lawrence Gardner, who started off in Manchester, had uh, on his plaque on the door of the workshop, Lawrence Gardner Machinist. But here's the rub. He was such a fine machinist that you didn't need gaskets apart from a cylinder head gasket just to keep the pressure up. His machining was so fine that the early gardeners didn't have gaskets to any of the bits added on to the block because the machining was face to face, absolutely tight, airtight and watertight. What's heavy oil? Is that when the oil in the chip pan needs changing? I think so, Ivan. You're getting a wee smell. You shout to your dad, You want chips, dad? He goes, Yeah, one or two. You go, Well, make your mind up. And so there you are. You play the pipes, Scotty. Well, I can tune the pipes for you and adjust them. My ear is very good, but I'm no dab hand on the chanter, but my father was. So there we are. Far or stray. Um, dee da dum, dee da dum, dee ya, dum da dee dee, dum da dee dee, dum da dee dum da dee da dee dee, dum da dee da da dum da dee dee, dum da dee dee da da dee, dum da 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 dee dum dee dum, dum da dum da dee da da dee dee dee, dum da dee dum da dee 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 dee, dum. Did you ever meet the lassie that walked behind the bar at the Inverary Inn? It's a great inn. So there we are. Uh, so fantastic. My wife is away to bed. Um, she did not realise I'm engrossed listening to you, lol. Dinky news, Robert. How is the time? Oh, for goodness sake, it's time we were away, actually. No wonder your wife's away to bed. We should all be away to our beds. Nice one, Scotty. Uh, hi, Scotty. Great to hear you again and see you on Facebook, says Diane Richardson. Dinky do, Diane. Lovely to have you with us. Guys, if every single one of you can spread the word big style, 
Scotty McClue is back just for you saying dinky do on a world broadcast platform, Facebook Live, Sunday nights, 10 o'clock sharp, 10 till 11. Well, there we are. Alan Baird says Kevin McNally. Nice one, Scotty, says James. You don't need pipes with lungs like that, my friend, says George Raffin. Uh, hi, Scotty, says Lewis Cunningham. Ah, but when you're playing the big ones, the black bear's quite a thing to get through with on your diddly dumb. Night, night, Scotty, my radio friend. Night, night, Tony Mac, my radio friend. Bedtime's here. The wife's waiting, says James. Don't keep the wife waiting, James. It is not worth it. And Scotty McClure used as an excuse. Doesn't actually... Hold water, as they say. Night night, Tom, says Robert Devlin. Dinky doo to you, Robert. Sleep tight, my dear friend. Thank you for the show, Scotty. Dinky doo the new. I'm off, guys. Take care of your dear selves. Have a wonderful, wonderful week until we all meet again. I shall try and pop up. I'll probably do the odd periscope. I may, in fact, nip on there just after this, just to tell the world what's happening. But spread the word and get onto YouTube and tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10 to tell 10. If you think I'm worth the odd fiver, get yourselves onto PayPal or to GoFundMe.com forward slash Scotty hyphen McClue, but no pressure. Absolutely. Until next week, guys, God willing, weather permitting, this is Scotty McClue saying dinky do just for you. Time for the song. Goodbye, everybody. Goodbye. Take care, everybody, as you go. Goodbye, everybody. Of wheat, the zane, au revoir, and a cheery oh. Dinky do, everybody. Scotty McClure has left the building. Oh, yes.